Hello, everybody, and welcome to Build and Deploy an ASP.NET Core Web API to Docker. Here's a little disclaimer about this session. OK, so now let's take a look at the session agenda. First, we'll look into how to create a new Core.NET Core Web API, test the Web API, deploy the Web API to Docker, then run the Docker image, and then what's next? How about serverless deployment of the web API? OK, here's a little information about myself and about my company. OK, so now let's begin by creating a new web API. For that, I uh, will have open Snap Develop. I'll click right here on Create New Project. I'll select the folder for this project. Let's make sure it's the right one. I um, will be naming it Customer Studio, and then the solution name would be Appion.Customer Studio. Click OK. And here we go. OK, so this created for me a new Web API project. Now, what I will be doing is I would be adding the new data context. That's basically the same as you would have your connection object in Power Builder. So let's just click Add, and then New Item, and then go here to Data Context, name it Default Data Context, click OK. It's going to be named Appian Sample. But in this case, I want to make sure that the address I want for it is the actual address I have in my network. So I'm going to test the connection. Everything went OK. Click OK, and then click OK again. So we have a default data context right there. Now I want to add this into my startup. First of all, I would be adding the using statements. So I need to add the using statements for snapobjects.data and then using statements for snapobjects.data.sql server, which is the database I would be using. Scroll down a little bit right here. I would remove this comments and put in the name of the data context, default data context. Then the connection string would be Appian Sample. There we go. I'm going to save this. So this is already saved. I will now leave some space right in here for the next dependency injection would be, we would be adding later on. So now I'll add new models. Here we go. I'll add a new model. Here it is. And this would be a new class. No, sorry. First, we need to add the folder. So I'm going to name it folders for this model would be models. This is the folder. So I will double click right here to make sure it's opened. I will now add a new class inside of it. And I will name it customer. OK, I'm going to click OK. So here we have it. I'll add the new using statements. Dot component model dot data annotations. Then using, sorry, using system dot component model dot data annotations dot schema using snap objects dot data here we have it and then I will be adding the class attributes so the first one is from table and this is going to be from the customer table then the schema is going to be DBO here we have it now I would also add the SQL order by just to make this a little bit more fun here we have it and then I'll be adding some property attribute. So now I know that this is a key. So this is an integer. So this would be public int. And this is ID at the getter and the setter. Here they are. Public string. And this one right here is called F name at the getter and the setter. There we go public string L name for the last name get an etc here we have it public string and then let me just make sure that I have the right one so I will open up my SQL server connection to make sure this is correct okay let's just give it a couple seconds
Okay, this is my database. Here are the tables. This is the customer table, and here it is. Address CD state. Okay, so it's public address, the getter and the setter. There we go. And let me see. Sip phone and company name. So public string sip. So I have now added my new model. This is the model that corresponds to that database table. So I will now add the new folders for the services. So all my services would be in here. So I'll open this up by double clicking on it and add again a new folder inside of it. This would be the implementation folder. Inside of this folder, I would put in the real services. So first of all, we're gonna add a new interface right here. Now I will name this interface and it would be named I customer service. Okay. Here we have it. I will add a new right here using the snap objects dot data. And then I will also require the customer studio dot model so that I can have my model available for me in here. So I would be returning an I list of the customer type and then the method would be called retrieve here we have it there we go i'm going to save this now i will add a new object in here this would be a class and it would be named customer service notice the difference between the interface that begins with an i and the service itself now for this i would also add the using statements for snap objects dot data and then the using statements for my customer studio dot model so that my model is available for me in here so now i need to tell it that this would be actually implementing the customer i customer service now i would create a new variable that would be private and read only and this would be calling the default data context we'll name this underscore context now i'll create its new constructor method adding passing in the context right here this is going to be help us to actually initialize the data context so let's put this in here context there we go okay so now i will be adding my new method it would be returning an i list of the customer type and the name of the method would be retrieve there we go so i would be now returning from within the context, I uh, would be using the SQL model mapper, its load method, and I would load the customer model. And then I would return this as a list. And that's it. So this would actually be retrieving my customer model using SQL model mapper. Now I would create a new controller by clicking over here, new item, API controller. I'm going to name this customers because it's plural. It would be returning more than one. So I'm going to click OK. And in here, I would add the V1. So that makes sure that this is actually the first version of my controller. So all this is automatically added for me. I'm not going to be needing it in here, but I would add some more using statements. So Microsoft.ASP.NetCore.HTTP and then the using snap objects dot data and then using customer studio dot models using customer studio dot services so my services are available for me in here as well customer studio dot services dot implementations as well so now that we have all this available i would create a private 
read only variable of the I customer service type it's going to be named underscore service I will now create a public customer customers controller um, this would be the constructor there we go the constructor event so I would pass in the customer service again so we can initialize this service here it is so I'm initializing it here it is now I would be adding the HTTP verb in it it's the get adding the produces response type this is going to actually be a status code of status 200 this means everything's okay now I would add the produces response type status codes dot status 404 this is in case that there was no retrieval at all produces response type status codes dot status 500 for any internal server error now I'll add an action result public action result it would be returning an I list of the customer model and in here I would also call it the retrieve method now I will add the source code for this this method now first of all I want to declare an I list of the customer type and I'm gonna name it customers new list of the customer type here we have initialized it now I'm gonna add a new try catch statement here we go uh, this is actually not too necessary so here it is and here we go so now I will make this call the service retrieve method so that we can actually get the the list of customers back now if something went wrong then we would be returning a status code of 500 with the error message from the exception it caught if everything was okay from within here and no exception was caught but then the customers count is actually equal to zero then in that case we would be returning a not not found exception no rows retrieved so here we have it there we go if everything else went okay so then we're going to be returning a response okay as well as the customer list that we were actually going to be using now this is almost done what I need to do is actually add all this to the startup so that I can add the dependency injection for my service so this service is actually available throughout my web API and to do that I will need to add I customer service first the in the in interface then the service itself customer service and there we go notice this squiggly lines if I place my mouse on top of them I can fix it by adding the using statements right in here here it is there we go so now let's go ahead and test this web API so I'm gonna run this customer studio okay notice how this already began for me now I'm going to be putting in the actual URL of my method here we go okay so here we have it now let's click OK and here it is so it's actually returning me the new table from the customers that I have selected before so now let's actually go ahead and publish this into the dockers so once this is already tested I can just right click here and then go to publish select docker click start and since this is going to be a local docker I'll just leave it as it is click next the registry URL I already have it in here I'm going to be placing in my username then my password click next 
Now I want to make sure that I delete the intermediate image and run the container for publishing. So this is going to be mapping to port 5000. Click finish and let it do its magic. Okay, so this is going to be taking a little bit of time while this completes. And now Publish has succeeded. It's now starting the Docker image for me. So now I want to make sure that this is actually running. So here it is, it's already running. But I want to test the one that I did. So I'll place this as we would actually expect it to be. So here you go, it's already running on Docker. Now, how to make sure that this is actually true? I'll place this in here so we can all take a look at it. Let's go to repositories. And this is the list I have. Let's refresh this. Here you go. This is the customer studio repository that I just published. So it's that simple. Now let's take a look at how to do the same thing, but to the serverless configuration. For that, I will be opening Visual Studio. So let's open Visual Studio. Oh, wrong one. So now let's see how to actually deploy this to a serverless configuration. I'll open Visual Studio 2019. I would open up the local folder for this deployment and so I'm going to search it in here. Here we have it inside of it uh, sorry it's this one in here select folder opening it up right in here so this is my solution it's opening it up in visual studio it's taking its time there we go let's let it finish restoring So here we have it. Now I'll click right in here and go to publish. There we go. Now you see that I have one right here, but I want to actually do a new one. So I will click on new. And then you see that we have Azure Virtual Machines or App Services. I would be creating a new service because that's what I want to do. So create profile. It's trying to connect to my services. And here it is. It's saying that it's a free trial service group hosting plan I can select whichever I want no insights I don't need them at the moment so we can just continue as is right in here so I'll click on create let's allow this a moment to deploy now please remember that I actually placed in the connection of the database a local IP address so I would also need to publish my database to a server in that case I already have that published but but I did not add it into this web application this web API so please don't forget to do that now let's give it a moment for this to continue I'll pause the video a little bit just to save time Okay, so we're back. This already deployed. Now let's make sure to publish it. Okay, so now that it's publishing, I would actually wait a couple seconds for this to get published. And here it goes. So it has already published this to this address. Okay, so here you can see that it is actually running on this sample here. So let's just make sure that this actually got published into Azure. And I'll refresh this. Let's just give it in here. You see, it's already been published into my Microsoft Azure as a serverless. Okay, thank you everybody for joining us. And I hope you have a great day.